Welcome to our next edition of the Foundation Speaker Series. My name is Karen Misanti. Today joining me is Bungai Maloy, or better known by her followers, students and friends as Miss B. But Miss B, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Miss B was born and raised in Zimbabwe. She came to the U.S. in 1985 in search of better education and a better life. After working as a social worker in Pennsylvania for over 20 years, she started her foundation, which is the American and Youth Leadership Foundation. I want to talk to her a little bit more about her foundation, but before we do, I think it's safe to say that many who live in the United States have no idea of the types of living conditions or the lifestyles so many people in other countries deal with. If you don't mind, tell me a little bit about um, your country and your journey to America. I'll be glad to do that. So I was born and raised in Zimbabwe, and uh, my parents were there, and my parents were very pro-education versus other parents uh, there. So uh, I finished my high school in Zimbabwe, and then I met my husband after high school. He was also uh, a graduate of uh, high school. So we both came to the United States, this was in 1985. But we came here in search of uh, higher education. Uh, back then, Zimbabwe, at the time, uh, higher education was a little bit difficult for the majority of people to get into. So my husband's family, some of them were here, and we also chose to come here to fill up our education. Which we did, uh, I did social relations, and I did my master's in special education. My husband did uh, computer science uh, programming. So wow. we did that. So, uh, so you had so you had some some uh, family that lived in, you know, in in America. So that's did you stay with them? Did you did you live with another family? My husband's family were most of them were here. My sister-in-law, my brother-in-law, but they were living in another state. They were not living in Pennsylvania. But they started off by living in Pennsylvania. So when we came, they were all. Uh, my sister-in-law was in Texas, and my other brother-in-law was. Uh, I forgot what state he was in, but it was in Pennsylvania. So we were very fortunate. We stayed with a couple that took us into their families. And uh, they kind of adopted us as their family. So we stayed with them. I'm going to call her Dawn, that's the lady. Uh, and the husband, his name was Bob. So they stayed with us uh, and treated us like we were their own children. And their children were out of the house. They were grown and born, you know, doing their businesses, doing what they were doing. So we stayed with them for the four years that we were going to school. It was really helpful for us. Wow, that's incredible. Um, before we talk about your, your current work of what you're doing here in, in America, let's talk a little bit about your foundation, the American and um, African and American Youth Leadership Foundation. Tell me a little bit about that and, and uh, what your goal is through that foundation. Okay. So, yeah, the nonprofit is called American and African Youth Leadership Foundation. And I came up with that name because uh, for me, being raised, born and raised in Zimbabwe and then migrated over here, I felt a need and I wanted to work with uh, youth. So my work here in the United States and uh, to be specific, I live in uh, Gap, Pennsylvania. So I work with youth in Cosville, in a town called Cosville. That's where my other business is. So I work with those kids and they're kind of vulnerable kids in a way that they, uh, they live in an inner city and uh, most of the people are under the poverty level. So I work with those youth teaching them etiquette skills, teaching them social graces, teaching them leadership skills, giving them the tools to progress in life. And when they finish school, they already know how to handle themselves when they are uh, in the workforce. And then uh, the African part of it is Zimbabwe, my Zimbabwean uh, girls, my vulnerable girls. So with that, from Zimbabwe, since I grew up and was raised there, I know how the you know, situation was in Zimbabwe, especially economically. So most people are poor, most people are desperate, they'll do anything to, you know, not educate the girls and they will educate the boys because of the poverty, because of the uh, situations in the home. So my really story began when I was about 11 years old and uh, my grandfather, my mother's uh, father, he was um, kind of rich, not rich, but in that situation, he, called, he thought he was rich, and he thought he was rich. So this family, they had a girl that was about my age. So they sold this girl to my grandfather, who was about 75 years old, 
in that time. And the girl was 12 years old. So my grandfather gave her parents about 10 cows. So she became his wife at 11 years old. And I could not understand I was the same age as she was. And uh, we were told that this is your grandmother now because she's my grandfather's wife. It didn't make any sense to me. I'm like, how can she be my grandmother? I'm, we're the same age. We want to play outside, you know, together. So we were told that she's my grandfather, my grandmother. You know, it's a long story, but that story really resonated with me until I became a grown woman myself. So my work, what I do currently with the girls in Zimbabwe, I help similar girls in similar situations with that particular girl that I witnessed going through all that. So I rescue these girls that are getting married off to old guys because of the poverty in their families and uh, they drop out of school again because of poverty. So I take them and we raise school uh, fees, scholarship funds for them so they can continue with school, go to school and, uh, you know, become independent when they finish school and hopefully and obviously they are going to pick their own husbands instead of being married off to somebody they don't want. Right. And based on our prior conversations, I know a little bit about that, but you, you typically t like to go over to Zimbabwe a couple times a year to meet with the girls. You, you work with, with the teachers over there to try to determine which young ladies may need your, your assistance. Unfortunately, given the times, you haven't been able to do that in a little bit, um, but your work still continues and you're still able to work through the, through the teachers that are there. Absolutely, yes. I work with the teacher there because she's the one, she teaches in uh, one of the schools that most of my girls come from. So she's on the ground and she knows which girls are the most vulnerable girls. So she uh, goes through the criteria, they meet the criteria. She, you know, puts them down and we get them in the program and we give them the scholarships and then they go to school, yes. Wow, that's incredible. It, it's incredible work. Um, yeah, very honorable work. So, so thank you for telling us about that. It, it, again, it's something that we don't, um, you know, in, in our culture, we don't really understand that. And so I, t I think it's important for people to learn what, um, you know, what, what, what we have here in the United States is so much different than what others may have. Absolutely. And when I think about it myself, you know, when because I live in both, you know, countries now, I go to Zimbabwe every twice a year and I live here. So when I look at uh, the way of living here and then I think of the way of living in Zimbabwe, it's so, you know, it's so much, you know, the difference is uh, unbelievable. And a lot of people that live here, you know, we don't understand and we don't we kind of take things for granted. Because, you know, when you look at those girls in Zimbabwe, going to school is a big deal. And here, it's not that a big deal because, you know, everybody has access to go to school. And, uh, you know, so the girls of that's kind of different. So I tend to appreciate uh, me living here and knowing how, you know, if I didn't come here, how my life would have ended. Right, right. So um, let's talk a little bit on um, minding manners with Miss B. So manners, no matter where, where you live, right, where, where you live in the world are important. Absolutely. And so you kind of take it upon yourself to help young ladies, whether it be in Zimbabwe or, or in the United States, to learn about what manners are. And I know that you have classes for all different uh, age ranges of students. Um, you have as young as five-year-olds and you've you've mentored young ladies, um, you know, 19 to 35 years old. And obviously each category has their own different things that you try to teach them and help them with. So tell me a little bit about your different programs for each of the age groups. Absolutely. So um, the, the, the groups that we teach, uh, the first group is from age five to age nine, and then we go to age nine, nine to 10, and then they up to 12. And then the, second, the third group is from 13, going all the way to 17, which I call the teen leadership uh, group. And then after 18 is a different group, which I call the young women's leadership class. So yeah, like you said, uh, we teach them different skills because the etiquette skills that you teach a five-year-old is different from what you would teach a teenage girl. So for the little ones, the first group, the five to nine, we tend to teach them the simple things like uh, brushing your teeth in the morning, making your bed, you know, pick up your plates from the table after you finish eating. And so we kind of progress it as they grow uh, older. And then the second group, we teach them the same thing, but we kind of increase it up a little bit. So we teach them different skills. And then when they come to teen, uh, the preteens and the teenage girls, 
that's where the excitement begins because now they are becoming young adults. They are getting ready to go out there. So we kind of bump it up a little uh, more where we will be teaching them uh, dining etiquette. We teach them business etiquette. We teach them financial uh, etiquette. We teach them all kinds of, uh, because now we are preparing them for work. Because some of my 16 year olds, they go to school. Uh, they go to school, but in summertime or weekends, they might get like a McDonald's job or anywhere they can go work somewhere. So we teach them uh, job interview skills, how to go to, to an interview, how to present themselves to the person who is interviewing them, and also how to work with other people in the same you know work environment, you know, and uh, we teach them office etiquette also. So we kind of you know keep bumping up a little bit, and then when they finish uh, th that teenage leadership. Now they can go to the young women's leadership course where we teach them, you know, all kinds of things. And the teenagers, we also try to start teaching them uh, relationship um, etiquette, how to recognize a good relationship and how to recognize a bad relationship so they can know the difference um, of wow. you know, good and bad relationship. Well, I, I think I may need to take your, your five to seven year old <laughs> class on making your bed every day because I'm not so sure that I, I do that religiously. So. <laughs> <laughs> I have to retake that class, but the rest I think I'm good with. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk a little bit um, specifically, since most of our audience are going to be high school, young ladies, high school students. Give us um, just a few of the things that you normally teach the 15 to 8 year old group. I know we talked about, uh, you mentioned table etiquette and, and dressing. Just give us a few things that you may cover during that class. Okay. So with my teenage uh, group, usually, because we want to get them now we are preparing them to be, you know, women, to be young women. So the most important thing that I teach them and that we teach them is to love yourself first before you love somebody else. So they have to love who they are. And we try to teach them that, you know, you, everybody's unique. Everybody's different. You are your own person. You were created by God in the image of God. So you, you love yourself just like God will love you. And, um, we also, you know, teach them if you don't love yourself, you can't love somebody else. You have to respect yourself, respect your body. You know, I that's really uh, like my favorite topic to teach them. It's difficult for them; they don't want to hear it sometimes. But I tell them that you know you have to respect respect your body. Don't just you know put anything in your body. Don't just you know your body is like the vessel of God. So you respect yourself. You respect your body. You love your body. You 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 keep you know who you are and kind of build their self-esteem uh, that way and i you know, usually tell them you know i actually give them mirrors like mirrors to look in the mirror so i tell them you know look in the mirror and tell that girl that you see in the mirror that you are beautiful that you are loved you are all that so just that's what we usually teach the teenage girl besides you know the other stuff that we teach them the business etiquette, the dining etiquette, uh, attitude, you know, because also the teenagers sometimes they have attitude and I teach them that sometimes your attitude can prevent you from doing the things that you want to do. It might be a job that you want to get, it's your dream job, but if you go there with a bad attitude, you can go with your bad attitude, but you are going to miss out on the job that you want. That's because you, you know, you want to portray that bad attitude. So we teach them that you know, attitude is very important. You have to know how to behave yourself, how to present yourself to other people. Sure, and 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 I, as you mentioned, I think in how they dress, uh, first impressions, right? How they yes, dress and how they absolutely. dress in an interview or how they dress out in public is very important to, to how they come across to people. Absolutely, yes, because it takes only a few seconds for somebody to make a first impression of you. So if you go to a job interview wearing something that's you not know, like revealing or like a mini mini skirt or just you know like all weird looking it takes three less than three seconds for somebody to say oh no mm -mm. <laughs> or, or it takes somebody that short of the time to say oh yes i'm gonna hire this person so right. we try to teach them that yeah that's tremendous so um I, I just just from speaking with you you're highly motivated you're you're very enthusiastic you're very passionate about what you do um, you're helping young ladies to live happy and healthy lives. And, but I'm sure there are times where it's very difficult and you, especially when you're dealing with young ladies, maybe from, from your home country, that to, to see that heartache and the things that are going on there. How do you keep such a positive attitude all the time? Sometimes I, I just love what I do. 
And of course, you know, it's not, you know, smiles all day, every day. So, but it keeps me going when I see the results of my work. For example, let's take my cortisol girls. Uh, if I'm teaching a class, many times I'm like, oh, next year I'm not doing this. But then I see what they do. I see the result of what I've taught them. Then I said, oh, I can do it one more year. I can do this again to a different group. And then to my Zimbabwean girls, it just keeps me motivated to see them uh have a big smile on their faces and to get married to invite me to a wedding that they pick their own husbands instead of them getting married off to somebody it just keeps me going it keeps me motivated because i see right there the result of what i do what i'm doing so it, it must have been making an impact if i see somebody uh inviting me to and they keep me uh motivated actually they communicate with me all the time they give me all the updates whatever they are doing if they achieve something they call me they text me a message they call me mom everybody calls me mom mom i did this you know <laughs> mom I, I i got a job mom i found uh, i met a man so that keeps me motivated a lot Absolutely. Well, you, you've become a mentor to so many young ladies, and I think you talked about it, and I think that comes from, from your past. You know, when you when you came here, you had good mentors, and you had role models of people that you looked up to, and I'm sure that's part of what you talk with about the young ladies, is you, you want them to become a mentor to other young ladies. Absolutely, absolutely. When I was in Zimbabwe, my mom was really my mentor because she taught me how to be a good person to other people. She taught me to say thank you, to appreciate, you know, like to appreciate people. So she was my mentor. And then when I came to the United States, this lady that took us in their home, she was my mentor. I will never forget her because I stayed with her for four years. And she never asked for a penny from us. She fed us. She dressed us. She made sure that I went to school. And when we were done with school, you know, I asked, I said, okay, this is a woman that I don't even know. So I just said, you know, so what can I do to say thank you for all these four years that you took care of me? And she said, don't worry about it, you know, it's my gift to you. All I ask for you to do is to go out there and help somebody else that you don't know. So that, that you know, what she said to me, I, it stays in my head. I'll never forget it. And I also take her advice that she gave me to say, go help somebody else. I also teach it to the girls that I work with, uh, my vulnerable girls in Zimbabwe. Because some of them are already done now. Some of them are working now. And they ask me the same thing. Miss B, what can we do to thank you? And I just take that, you know, from Dawn and say, don't worry about anything. Just go out there and help somebody else that you don't know. And actually, I have a young lady who just graduated a couple of years ago, and she's working, and she's also supporting some younger girls. She's supporting girls that are in the same situation. So she's doing what was done to her. So again, that you know, that kind of thing motivates me all the time. Absolutely, get the importance of giving back. Absolutely. Yes. Oh. Well, yes. we were. You were um, all set to come and, and volunteer, mentor young young men, young men and ladies for our, our summer program. Unfortunately, that yes. didn't happen given the pandemic, but we certainly look forward to next year when we hope yes. you will join us because you're you're a wonderful, wonderful mentor. You've changed many young lives and um, we're honored to be a part of your family and, and look forward to you being a part of our family next summer. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward. I was looking forward to this year, but again, you know, it didn't happen. But, you know, this is, you know, that's as good. And I'm also looking forward to next summer to be part of uh, this program as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Ms. B, thank you. Thank you for your time, for your information, for giving us uh, a bit of your journey in life and your advice for the young ladies. Um, I've enjoyed spending time with you. Thank you so much. I do enjoy having time with you as well. And thank you for giving me this opportunity to share my passion with you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Absolutely. If anybody wishes to connect with Ms. B directly, please feel free to do so. Her contact information will be provided following this interview. She would love to hear from you. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you.